Hello and welcome to the latest webcast from Innova Systems, Staircase Design in SolidWorks. My name's Alex Aprigliano. Now in my experience of creating staircases, when you first design the staircase you may need to go through architect's drawings, looking at various plans and elevation views, trying to establish things like the floor to floor height, where the stills at the, the staircase can fix to are located, where or if a concrete base is going to be laid, those sorts of things. At this stage it may actually be necessary for you to provide a model or drawings to win the job or for quotation purposes. Now this would normally be followed by a site survey. This could be a sophisticated CAD drawing or a simple sketch. The site may have actually changed dram dramatically compared to what was on the initial architect's drawings and hopefully by the time you receive the site survey there aren't too many to be confirmed dimensions on there. Now, whether you have modelled the staircase from the architect's drawings or from the site survey, the likelihood is that we will have to deal with change, and we need to react quickly to change. So what are the things that are likely to change? The floor to floor height, the width the staircase has to span, and in turn, the rise height, the number of rises, and the angle of inclination. Now the floor to floor height is going to be driven by the site, you won't have too much say in what that is. The width the staircase has to span is partially going to be driven by the site, but you will have some input because you may need to fix to a, a specific base or uh, avoid doors or, or various obstructions. With regard to the rise height and the number of rises, uh, the rise height would be normally determined by British standards, so you'll Depending on the type of staircase that you're doing, you'll probably have a range that you can work between. Uh, it might be between 180 to 220 millimeter as an example. The number of rises is determined by your floor to floor height divided by your rise height. Now if we have an example of that, if we have a floor to floor height of 1000 and a rise height of 200, we get exactly five rises. So that's nice and easy. And it's easy because those values divide into whole numbers. But that's not always the case. And when it's not the case, we need to do some rounding up. So we do it this way. Uh, our number of rises will say are equal to the floor to floor height divided by our ideal rise height. So let's say we have a floor to floor height of 1005 and we divide that by 200. That gives us 5.025 rises. So what we need to do is round that value. So the 5.025 becomes five. And then we can say our rise height is equal to the floor to floor height divided by the rounded number of rises. So again, if we see an example, 1005 divided by five gives us a rise height of 201. Now we can actually build that intelligence into solid work. So that's what I'm going to do now. On the screen at the moment, we have a sketch which is going to represent our stringer. Uh, and everything is going to be driven from the stringer itself. Now, before we do anything, we're going to go into equations and we're going to start building up global variables which are going to represent uh, what we just looked at in the slide. It's just a slightly more complicated equation in this case because we have a rest land in, in place. So in terms of how we're going to define that, I'm going to call from the base to the rest landing, the floor to floor lower and from the rest landing to the top landing, I'm going to refer to that as floor to floor upper. So if we start by adding a global variable called floor to floor lower, and we'll say that is equal to a thousand millimeters. Floor to floor upper, again equals a thousand. We're going to say our ideal rise height is equal to 200 and then the number of rises is going to be for the lower portion equal to the integer which is just going to do our rounding for us of floor to floor lower divided by our ideal rise height, which equates to five. Do the same for the upper section. Uh, 
that again is just going to equal the integer of floor to floor upper divided by ideal rise height. Okay, so now we've done that, we can establish what our rise height is. So for the lower section, we're going to say that that is equal to the floor to floor lower divided by our number of rises lower. For the upper section, we're going to say again that is equal to the floor to floor upper divided by the number of rises upper. Okay, so there are our global variables and equations in place, and we can actually test out if everything works here. So if we take the example that we did on the PowerPoint, we can say that our floor to floor lower equates to 1005. So that then equates to exactly five when we uh, when we do our div divide sum. And then finally, we can see that the rise height lower value equates to 201. Let's change this one above to 2000. And you can see that we now get 10 rises for the upper section. Just undo that like so. Okay, so now to link our variables to the dimensions within the sketch. Okay, so within the sketch, I'm just going to select the 1000 dimension and I'm going to equal that to the floor to floor lower value that we placed in. I'll do the same with the upper section, like so. I'll then go ahead and just extrude that sketch. And I'm just using my, uh, or I've just set the part up as a weldment here just to, uh, to keep these bodies separate nice and easily. Okay, now to put our uh, fixing holes for our tread. I'm gonna place on this face a couple of holes. We're going to go 12 mil through all. And just place two holes down like so. I'll then add some reference geometry. And that value there is going to represent our uh, rise height. So if I just equate that to the rise height lower, you can see that equals 201 then. And I'll set the space in between them at 120. I'll also add this as a reference dimension. And what that'll allow me to do is when I pattern this um, along this edge, uh, I can use this as my spacing value, which will keep the um, rise the same as this value here. The last thing I actually need to do here is just add a uh, horizontal relation between the holes and then the fixings are going to sit 20 mil below the tread itself. Okay, so with that done, we'll go into our linear pattern tool. We'll choose the edge that we want to pattern along, and then the spacing, as I said, is going to equate to this reference dimension here. The amount of instances is going to equate to the number of rises lower. However, that gives us a holes for treads at the top where the rest landing would be and that's not really what we want so we'll just edit that to equal number of rises lower minus one okay so that's looking pretty good we can do the same at the top I'll just copy those holes across and then edit the feature to re-establish some relations So in this um, section, we're going to equate that dimension there to the rise height upper. Like so and then we'll take that feature and pattern it along the uh, center line as shown. And then our spacing value is going to equate to our reference dimension here. Um, we're going to equate the amount of instances to our global variable number of rises upper 
minus 1. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now, if we want to make changes to this to test it's working, we can just access our dimension. So I'll make this 1398. I'll make this 1305. And we'll make this one 995. And leave that as a thousand. Okay, once we rebuild that, you can see that we get the additional uh, instance along the top part of the stringer, um, and we don't uh, on this this one here. So everything is looking good. Everything is updated quite nicely. In terms of our um, cut list, we'll just go ahead and update that, and that will create a. Uh, an entry in our cut list for each one of these bodies and then if we just create our bounding box that will fit the smallest possible cuboid around each one of those individual bodies and give us width height and uh, length dimensions okay now to uh, to make the drawing just before we do that we'll go and fill in our uh, description of what we're making here so this is our stringer detail and the material for this we're going to make plain carbon steel. Okay, if we just put this on a drawing sheet now, we'll drag in a few. Just up the scale of the sheet to let's say 1 to 20. And with that, I'll just insert all the dimensions in that we used to uh, construct the, um, the model in the first place. Okay, so there they are. We'll also insert a weldment cut list. And uh, as I said, with that, it brings in plate plus its size descriptions for each one of those bodies. We can also, at this stage, auto balloon it as per our uh, cut list, like so. Okay, now if we want a drawing of an individual plate here, we can just add another sheet, drag on a drawing view, just isolate the body that we want to dimension. Perhaps we'll up the scale of it. And just rotate it around. We can add our dimensions. And then lastly, what we might want to do here is just to add in the whole detail. So we'll use a whole table to do that. We'll define our data point like so. Press OK, and you can see that we get a whole table automatically generated for us. We'll just con combine the same sizes, telling us where those hogs are in respect to the datum that we chose. OK, so that's looking pretty good for our drawing. We could do the rest with the, the, the other bodies, but uh, I think that's good enough for now. So here's the assembly that I've uh, I've started off. What I've got is two instances of the stringer in, as well as two treads complete with their fixing mated into position. Now, in order to populate the rest of my assembly with the uh, the, the relevant treads and fixings, um, I'm going to drive all of that from the linear pattern that was used to create the whole whole um, for the fixings. So the way it works is we'll select our uh, tread and fixings. We'll go to feature driven component pattern. And then as our driving feature, we will select the linear pattern. And everywhere where there's an instance of the holes created from the linear pattern, we'll get an instance of our tread. We'll do the same up the top. So we'll select the components, go to feature driven component pattern. And as our driving feature, we'll select the linear pattern like so. Now I've um, added a couple of landings to my design library and um, I'm just going to show you how I've set those up. 
So first thing I'm going to do here is just show the, the reference sketch from the stringer. Now the first landing, I want it to run from the vertex of the sketch here and extend past the face of this tread by 20 mil. So we can see the distance here is 1280. So I need to make my uh, landing 1300 uh, by 900 to fit nicely between the stringers. So the way I've set it up is such that when we drag our landing in, we're presented with the uh, this parameters box, and I can say I want the length to be 1300 and the width to be 900. And at that stage, it will automatically create the relevant configuration for me. I'll just go ahead and make that into position. Like so. With the top landing, I need that to be 1200 mil by 900 mil. I can tell it's 1200 because of my status bar down the bottom here. So as we drag it in, again, the length is 1200, the width is 900. And we just need to, to make that in place. Now once we have those landing in, landings in, what I'm going to do is just open up the stringer and make a change. And we'll see that everything updates correctly. So if we bring up these values, I'm gonna set that to, let's say, 1540. I'll have that at uh, 1490. I'll have that at 1120. And that one at 1100. So let's just rebuild this and you can see the additional instances uh, are created for us automatically. Now if we go back to the assembly you can see that everything is updated for us automatically. Okay so our first uh, column for the rest landing needs to be suitable uh, for 1120 floor to, to rest landing height. So as I drag and drop this column in, we are presented with the uh, this parameters box here. And from a pre-made pre list, I can select the 1120 variant. I'm just going to make the uh, base of the uh, column to the top plane of the assembly. We'll then just spin that around and take the fix in bracket and make that to the framework here. And then we'll just drag it roughly into position like so. The second approach you might want to take here is the in context approach. So with this column, I'm just going to drag it in and mate it as before. Notice this time I'm not presented with the property manager. So we'll mate it to the uh, base of the foot plate again spin it round and make the fixing bracket to the landing still work. And again, just shift that roughly into position. So with this, uh, this column here, I've purposefully left the sketch that drives the height of it undefined. And what that will allow me to do is just grab hold of the endpoint and constrain it to the top of the landing like so. As we exit the sketch, you can see everything rebuilds and the column is the correct height. Now in terms of how these parts will rebuild, should a change be made to the stringer, the in context one will update automatically to give the correct height. The rest landing one won't because uh, we've chosen a preset size. If you did make a change and you needed to, to um, change the floor to floor, or sorry, change the um, column height, you could just access the same dialog box as before and choose the relevant configuration. Now the last thing that we'll look at here is just adding some holes uh, to attach the column to the, um, the landing and the stringer. There's no reason why we can't add these holes in at assembly level using the hole wizard tool. 
we'll just select some 12 mil through holes and position those concentric with the holes like so. What's nice here is that if we make a change to the position of the column, once we have rebuilt the model, you can see the holes uh, move with the column. Okay, we'll just go ahead and open up a finished assembly now. Okay, so let's say this is an assembly that I've I've already used for a job. What I've done here is I've created all the relevant documentation that goes with it. I, I have a, a drawing file complete with my bill of materials. If I go to the, the landing, I have the associated drawing with, that goes with that and everything has been documented here. Now, what it's actually possible for me to do here is if another job comes in which requires a, a almost a, an identical staircase but perhaps the widths and the heights have changed i can basically take the entire staircase and all its documentation and copy that uh, to a new folder so the way i do it is um i open up the top level assembly and i go to file pack and go okay so pack and go gathers all of those um associated files i can also choose to include the associated drawings that, that go with that as well and i can save all of that to a brand new location on my machine so if i just click on browse i'm just going to make a new folder in here called job 006 and then i'm going to suffix all of my documentation with hyphen 006 And then we just go ahead and save to that folder. Okay, so the new job is going to be a fire escape on, on this building, which I've just drawn a small section of. And if we have a quick look, the floor to floor height that we need to match here is going to be 3125. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the um, the newly saved assembly. And just place that in the assembly like so. We'll add a couple of mates to constrain this. So I'll take the top plane of the staircase and the concrete floor and mate them together. I'll then just use my magnifying glass to select the side face of the door and make that to the side face of the stringer. And lastly, we'll take the face of the wall and make that to the back face of the landing, like so. So the staircase is correctly positioned, but the floor to floor height um, is incorrect. So we'll just go ahead and open up the stringer and make our changes. So we'll access the dimensions. I'm going to make this first dimension, let's say 1452. And we'll make this one here 1398. We'll change the rest land into 1000. We'll take the upper section and make that 3125 minus 1452. Gives us 1673 and we'll leave that at 1600. We'll perhaps increase the um, landing size to 1300 like so. Okay, let's just rebuild that. And then once we've done that, let's just switch back to our assembly. And you can see that everything is updated for us quite nicely there. The last thing that I might think about doing here is putting on my balustrade in. So the way I'm going to do that is just insert a brand new part into my assembly and I'm going to constrain that part to the, the face of the string here. I'm then going to begin start to, to sketch the construction lines which will just aid me in the process of creating the, uh, the balustrade in. So we'll start off on the vertex. I'll draw a line vertically upwards and then we'll do 
uh, a linear sketch pattern where I want the spacing to be roughly around about 500 millimeters. And we'll just increase that until it looks about right. So you can see that I'm going quite away past my um, my last tread, uh, sorry, my last, the door at the moment. So we'll just um, take that back to 11 instances and increase the space into 510, perhaps a, a little bit bigger, 515. That's looking pretty good. Just press OK to finish that off. And then we have the the values that we can basically manipulate the uh, the spacing with just here. All right, now we've done that, we just need to draw on um, lines that will represent the, the uprights on our balustrading. I'll just hide the, um, the building away for, for a bit of clarity here. Okay, so we'll select my line tool and we'll just draw a line up from there. And then we'll just try and pick up on those intersections and, and complete the rest of the lines. Okay, so there's all of our lines drawn. We'll just take all of those lines and make them the same size. So I'll just select them all like this. And then we'll create an equals relation. Let's just turn off the, uh, the sketch relations as well. Okay, last off here, we'll just have a dimension of 1100 millimeters like so. Within the same sketch, we'll create the um, the lines that will make up the top railing. So I'll just draw that roughly into place, like so. And again, just with a, a few relations, constrain that into place. Okay, so the sketch is looking fine there. What we'll then do is just grab a structural member and send it along that line. So we'll exit our sketch at this stage. We'll go to our structural member tool, pick out a relevant structural member. So we'll perhaps go for um, some square tube. And let's say we want this at, let's try 40 by 40. Okay, we'll just select our lines like so. And there you can see the structural member applied to it. Perhaps we'll, we'll make that just slightly bigger, maybe a 50 by 50 instead. Okay, what that will do in the corners for us is automatically mitre. We could, if we wanted to, have a, a butt joint instead, should we wish to. Uh, in terms of where it's sitting on that line, currently the profile is on the center of the structural member of the line. Um, we can just choose to change that and send it to the outside. So the, the back face of it will sit flush with the stringer. Okay, let's now do all the, the uprights. So we'll just go through selecting those and they will automatically trim themselves to uh, the top rail. So if we just hide that sketch away, you can see that our um, balustrade has been created. And if we bring our building back, you can see that's now looking quite good. 
If we open up the drawing of the um, straight flight, you can see that once it rebuilds, all the document changes, uh, all the documentation changes to what it should be. What we might just have to do, because we've increased the size of it, is just reposition the, the drawing view on the page to suit. But all of our documentation for our landings, for our treads, for our stringers, will have updated as per the new, um, new dimensions. So whether you're doing a straight flight, um, a 90 degree uh, turn, um, a dog leg stair, the, um, the process that you may go through is gonna be similar. So the idea is that we can very quickly just get our floor to floor heights, pick the type of stairs that we want, and then just manipulate the sizes of it and have all of our documentation update for us automatically. If we go back to the slide, thanks first off for, for attending. Um, future webinars coming up on the 5th of December, we have architectural metalwork, followed by on the 12th of December, plants and site layout. Thanks again.